this is ICO Talk. My name is Irina, and today I'm going to review the project called Innovative Bio Research. So let's get started. So here's their website, and we're going to go straight to the ICO section. So Innovative Bio Research is the first ICO launched by a biotech company for funding a low-cost AIDS cure solution to allow access to the treatment where access to traditional costly HIV antiretroviral is hampered by social and or economic limitations. So here we're going to go straight to the white paper, which is right here. It's not too long, so you can go through it if you feel like doing that. And the first section is their goals. So the first goal is to implement sub-T1 cell infusion therapy, which is a low-cost aid cure solution. We're going to get into more details about it later. The second goal is decentralized database for clinical data to overcome the limitations of current centralized databases, which we're going to find out about later in this review as well. The next goal is a social app for providing information, support, and services to the HIV seropositive community. And the last goal is a token, INNBC, which is going to be spendable to buy classic iconic GDM cars and therefore backed by the value of actual real physical goods. The next part of the white paper is disclaimer of liability, which basically recommends that you consult with your legal, financial, tax, or other professional advisors prior to making any investment decision. The following is the information about the Innovative Bio Research, which is a privately held biotech company based in Italy. Owned and founded by research scientist Jonathan Fire, with the goal of bringing information to the field with a focus on HIV, cancer, and regeneration research. So this token sale is being launched to support the AIDS cure solution, as well as to develop an application providing, on the one hand, a decentralized database for clinical data generated by their future human trials to overcome the limitation of the current Asian centralized databases and on the other hand, a social platform for the HIV seropositive community and their future services. So Jonathan Fire and his team came up with a novel cell-based therapy for HIV, sub-T1 cell infusion. And this section basically explains what it is and how it's gonna work. Let's get straight to its advantages and potential issues, which are right here. So first of the potential benefits is the vaccination effect since sub to one cells have been shown to have a very powerful vaccination effect in vitro. The second one is potentially no organ toxicity. sub to one cell infusion is a cell-based treatment and there is no chemical substance injected into the body that needs to be metabolized, which could significantly improve the quality of the patient's life. The next potential benefit is effectiveness in patients in a terminal state of disease that develop drug resistance and very aggressive HIV strains. Another potential advantage is possible association of the treatment with novel molecular compounds, such as WIF inhibitor, to act on HIV reservoirs. And last but not least is cost effectiveness of this cure solution. Further in this review, I'm going to show you a graph that compares costs of different treatment solutions. At the same time, there might be some potential issues of this treatment, and we're going to discuss them in this section. So, the first uh, potential issue is safety. Based on the clinical data they already have from cancer vaccination studies and from the results of their first animal study, they believe that meeting the safe standards required for human trials is something feasible. There are also rejection issues. So given the tumoral nature of sub t one cells, they should be significantly less immunogenic than normal cells, and as such, should survive in the patient long enough to provide a therapeutic effect. However, it is possible that the HIV virus will eradicate the cells faster and more efficiently than the immune system itself in any case. As you can see right here, there is a list of references to support this information. Now we're going to talk about some issues that current Asian centralized databases pose. 
Traditionally, all data generated by scientific research is collected in the form of a scientific article, which is published in a peer-reviewed scientific journal, and it is usually made available on a public database, such as NIH's PubMed database. When a novel therapeutic strategy, such as sub cell infusion therapy, goes through the several stages of clinical research, different research teams all over the world may perform the research. And once the therapy is finally approved for human treatment, different clinicians all over the world may administer the treatment to patients. So this means that when a research team wants to perform clinical research, they have to go through the tedious and time-consuming process of searching for all the published data from previous trials, read the papers, select the useful data, and make the best possible interpretation of the data to create a protocol for their trial, personalizing it for the typology of patients. In fact, every patient may have different individual characteristics, such as age, ethnicity, HIV tropism, and thus may require personalized treatment protocols. And the same issue is present when clinicians begin to administer an approved treatment to patients. They have to go through all the papers and make a best guess on what treatment protocol should be used. As mentioned, this process of accessing clinical data can be quite tedious and time-consuming, but it can also introduce human error. So, innovative bioresearch offers the solution to this issue, a decentralized database using the blockchain to store and access clinical data. Here's a picture that simplifies the explanation of the work of this database. This is what they're proposing with the creation of the You're Not Alone application. The application would allow the input of a broad range of individual parameters for each treated patient, such as age, ethnicity, disease progression stage, viral tropism of HIV virus carried, along with the clinical protocol used, and the outcome of the treatment. The app would then access and elaborate the data on the fly. Statistical analysis, such as means, standard deviations, correlations, and power, and even the elaboration of suggested treatment profiles that could work best for each type of patient could be performed. If you have ever tried to run statistical analysis on your own, you realize there is a tremendous amount of work which is now going to be done with no human intervention needed. And if you haven't, congratulations, you're a happy person. Another amazing feature is that due to not having the editorial constraints of a scientific journal, the whole raw data generated by any research could be included in the database. There are some of the potential advantages of using the blockchain technology for creating a decentralized database for clinical data, such as immutability, decentralization, and security. On the other hand, there might be some drawbacks, such as transaction slowness, However, this would hardly be the case for a scientific database, where data would be entered at a much slower pace given that it can require several months to years for a clinical study to be completed and new data to be produced. And also, another drawback can be data storage being primitive. Now, if you're wondering why the name of the app would be You Are Not Alone, we're going to find out why. So the application will also document the progress of their AIDS cure research project, featuring periodic updates such as articles, blogs, and many others. This will create a community where HIV seropositive people can stay up to the date, comment, share, interact with uh, the professionals working on the cure and with each other. Uh, so here are social features of the app. So the users will be able to create their own profiles and join discussions, connect to their channel to stay updated, and ask questions to dedicated professionals and get free medical advice. Now let's talk about the token utility. And this section is right here. So as we know, tokens are not usually backed by the value of actual, real, physical goods, which means there is nothing stopping them from falling in value other than trust in the platform. This is what makes INNBC token different. It's going to be backed by the value of a physical good. At the first stage, so right after the end of the token sale, they will launch their INNBC JDM online garage, where INNBC tokens can be spent to buy cars from a selection of high-quality JMD classic cars. Selection of cars will mostly concentrate on classic iconic JDM cars such as Skylines, Supras, Subaru, and Evos.
Honestly, I'm not a huge Chorus fan, but even I was amazed with the selection of the cars they're going to offer. You can scroll down through the pictures, but keep in mind that the prices are not exact. It's just for example. So these classic JDM cars are true collector items, and as such, they're only going up in the value. If you're wondering why JDM cars for a biomedical research-related project, they have three answers. First, they're simply awesome. Let's be honest. I mean, really, you've seen the pictures. Also, it's a huge interest of the founder, Jonathan Fire, so he has established connections in this area. And last but not least, car enthusiast community is one of the most welcoming and sensitive community when it comes to supporting social issues such as fighting AIDS. Also, at the second stage, so three to six months after token sales, they will launch the first version of their You Are Not Alone app, where INNBC tokens can be spent to access a number of privileged features in the app ecosystem, such as becoming moderator in the social communities. So the 1% of the revenue generated by in-app ads will go to community moderators as a compensation for their work. In addition, token economy will be integral part of the rep reward point system of the social community. Users who will make particularly useful contributions will earn tokens. Now let's get into the token details. So the hard cop for this platform is going to be 7 million INNBC tokens, including pre-sale. The payment methods is Ethereum, number of INNBC for pre-sale is 2 million, and number for INNBC tokens for sale is going to be 5 million. The INNBC token will be an ERC20 token released on the Ethereum blockchain, and there will be only one initial limited supply of INNBC tokens. INNBC token emission price is 1 euro per 1 INNBC, corresponding to 415 INNBC per 1 Ethereum with respect to the Ethereum Euro exchange rate on the day of smart contract creations, April 16, 2018. And the minimum purchase is 10 INNBC tokens. Here also you can read about the discounts they're going to offer. And the following is the timeline. And you can see that we're now in the sale phase right here. Here are some details about the business model and where the team expects to get the revenue from. There is also the information about the current situation and numbers of people living with HIV around the globe. Here is the graph I was talking about in the beginning of this review. So you can see the difference in costs of different treatments. Here is also the graph that shows how the funds are going to be distributed. And the next section is the team of innovative bio research. So Jonathan Fire is owner and chief scientific officer. Uh, he is a research scientist specialized in the field of virology, immunology, cancer, and regeneration. Um, and then the social media manager is David Bosseri, and uh, Alessandro Gatti is chief legal officer, who makes sure that everything they do is in accordance with the law. They also have um, advisors on their team. The next section is contract research organization they have partnered with, as well as software development companies. And the last section is, of course, a risk disclaimer, which you might want to go through prior to making any investment decisions. All right, now let's get back to their homepage because there is something else I wanted to call your attention to. First is this section. They have the largest Telegram community of any other ICO with the first Telegram group featuring 100,000 members and other second group growing to reach similar numbers soon. So feel free to join both of them to stay updated. You can also follow them on Facebook and Twitter and other social media. Also, here is a very helpful section with frequently asked questions right here where you can find some useful information about the bounty or referral programs, JDM cars, and much more. Also, here you can find another reviews of this platform on YouTube made in Russian, Turkish, and English languages. And last but not least, the French electronic giant Arches partnered with Innovative Bio Research to promote its Arches safety mini towards crypto enthusiasts 
while taking part to the development of medical research through the blockchain. And you can read the full press release right here. So this was a review of Innovative Bio Research. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please let me know what you think in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Bye-bye.